Hey everybody, in this video we are going to create a rock, paper, scissors game in Java. It'll be fast, easy to make, and great for beginners to practice your fundamentals. Before we get started, as always, the full source is available in the link down below in the description, so go and get it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more Java lessons and tutorials like this every week. There's just a few pieces of this program we'll need in order to make it work properly. So we're going to need to accept a move from the player, uh, rock, paper, or scissors from the keyboard, and we're also going to need the computer to select a move at random, rock, paper, or scissors, to play against the player. And then once we have those moves, we're going to compare them and print out who wins. Okay, so let's just get started with the uh, randomized computer input first. So I think what we're going to do for this is create a string array called RPS for rock, paper, or scissors. And what we're going to put in that array are just three strings, RPS, for rock, paper, and scissors, and then the computer's move is just going to be a randomized element of that list. It's going to be the rock, paper, or scissors at random. So we'll just create our list here of R, P, and S, and there we go. Okay, All right now to get the computer move, we'll say string computer move, and we're going to set it equal to an element from this array um, but what the index we want to get is random. We want to get a random index between 0 and 2 for the 0th, 1st, or 2nd element of this list, RPS. And so to do that, we'll say new random, because we want a random generator here. And we're going to need to import that, Java Util random. And then, so then we'll do next int, where what we'll pass in is going to be the size of that array, rps.length. So rps.length is the length of this array, which is 3. And when we pass a 3 into this random next int method, it's going to give us a random number between 0 and 1 less than the number we pass in. And since we're passing in 3, the length of this array, it's going to give us a 0, 1, or a 2 at random. So that's exactly what we want. We have a random computer move. All right, so now we have to get the move from the player, from the user. And to do that, we're going to use what you might expect, scanner. So we've got a scanner, scanner equals new scanner system.in for keyboard input. Again, we'll do our importing Java util scanner. And now we're going to print sys out, please enter your move. R, P, or S for rock, paper, or scissors. And then to actually get the player's move, we're going to write string player move equals scanner dot next line. And that is going to get the next line of input from the user via the keyboard. But now what if the player types in garbage, like if something, anything other than RP or S? Well, we'd like to validate for that, but we want to do it quickly here. We're pressed for time. So we're just going to write a little while loop that once we get correct input, we're going to jump out of. So what we can do is just write a while true loop. So that'll loop forever until we write a break statement that kicks us out of it, right? So what we're going to do is so we've got this player move from the player. And actually, let's go ahead and move this declaration outside of this while loop because we're going to need that player move outside of the while loop when we're done with it. And so basically, all we have to do here is check to see if the player entered RP or S. And if they did, we can break out of the loop. Uh, otherwise, we're going to write a complaint message to the user and make them put in something else. So just if player move dot equals R or and we're just going to copy and paste this for the other two, or player move equals P, or player move equals S. Get rid of this last or here, we don't need it. Then break. And then after this if, if we're still in this loop, we know that the player didn't enter valid input, so we need to complain to them about it. So just sys out player move plus uh, is not a valid move. So it'll print back to them what they typed in and say, hey, that's not a valid move. It'll jump back to the top of the wild loop and force them to try again. Okay, so now we have a valid move from the player. We should have a valid move from the computer. And now we just need to compare them. So first, I think what we should do is print out what the computer chose and then print out the results of the game. So what the computer chose, sys out, uh, we can just say computer played space and then plus to concatenate the computer move. So now we can see what the computer played. So first, what I think we can check for is a tie. I think that'll be the simplest check to make. So that's just if player move dot equals computer move. So if those were the same, we'll just print out uh, the game was a tie. Uh, the game was a tie. 
And so else, else if, so now we're going to go through all the different conditions that a, a player could have chosen it compared to what the computer chose. So we're going to go through rock against the things that the computer could have chosen, then paper, then scissors. So we've got else if player move dot equals R. So the player chose rock. Now we already know the computer didn't choose rock because the game didn't end in a tie. We've already checked for that right above. So we can just say if computer move dot equals P. So the player chose rock and the computer chose paper then the computer wins. So in other words, you lose. So we'll just do a sys out, you lose. And then otherwise, else if the computer move uh, was an S, scissors, then we can say you win. You chose rock and the computer chose scissors. All right, so let's co copy this whole else if uh, for the paper. So the, the player move was paper. So we know the computer didn't choose paper because we already checked for a tie. So if the computer chose rock, then you win because you chose paper, the computer chose rock. And then if the computer chose scissors, uh, you lose because scissors beats paper. And then let's copy this one more time for if you chose scissors. Then if the computer chose paper, then that means you win. Scissors beats paper. Otherwise, if the computer chose rock, then you write you lose because rock beats scissors. Okay, I think that's it. Let's run our program and do a quick test. Okay, please enter your move, rock, paper, or scissors. I'll choose paper. Computer played rock and you win. Yes, paper beats rock. So awesome, that worked. Let's try it a few more times. Okay, enter your move, rock. Computer plays paper and I lose, but it is working. Okay, now let's test if I put in some garbage input, like, uh, blah. Uh, it's not a valid move, please enter your move, garbage. Okay, that is working, the validation is working. Now I can put in scissors, computer played scissors, game was a tie. All right, so I think our logic is working and that's the main part of the game. The hard part is, is good to go. But now I think I just want to, I hate having to restart the game every time uh, to play again. And I would really like to just have the option to play again if I want to. So what we can do is just loop through this entire program in a while loop and break out when the user uh, doesn't want to play anymore. All right, so to do that way up at the top, we're going to put a while loop around uh, just about our whole program. So while true, we're going to do this whole thing. So I highlight the whole thing, move it over, and end our while loop here at the very end. Uh, one part that we actually want to move out of this loop is the scanner declaration. We don't want to uh, create a new scanner each time. Java gets really weird if you create multiple system.in scanners. So we'll move that out of the loop. We can reuse it every iteration of the loop with no problems. So then way at the bottom of our program, uh, just before the end of our while loop, we can print something out to the uh, user that just says, uh, play again. And then we just say, you know, why or n for yes or no. And then we can create a string for play again uh, and set it equal to uh, what the user types in next. Uh, so that's going to be scanner dot next line. All right. So then we can do something pretty simple here. We can just say if uh, not play again dot equals y. Right? So basically, if they didn't say yes, then we'll just assume no, they don't want to play again. So if it doesn't equal Y, just say break. And that will break out of this uh, overall while loop and end the program. All right, let's go ahead and run this again and make sure our outer loop works. Enter your move. Let's put in some garbage. Make sure that still works. Okay, so I can choose rock. Computer played rock. It was a tie. Play again. Yes. Now please enter your move. Scissors. Computer played rock. I lose, but it is working. Our loop is working. Let's play it one more time. Yes. Enter your move. Um, paper. Computer played rock. I win. Play again. No. And the game ends. Awesome. Right, cool. I think that did it. So it's a pretty neat little program, right? And though it seems simple, there's a lot of little pieces of it that are, you know, part of your Java fundamentals, like while loops, uh, getting a random number, some arrays, some string comparisons, a set of if and else if statements to do some logic. And uh, you got keyboard input from the user. So there's a lot of little things that you did here. So even though it's a quite a simple little program, uh, it's fun to play and you've used a lot of your Java fundamentals getting it going. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know there's still a step left. This scanner, we've got a resource leak, and scanner is not closed. Now, we got to, and like on all of our programs, you've got to be a good Boy Scout at the end of our program. Close your scanner. 
just makes you feel like a fine upstanding citizen. Now, if you enjoyed making this game or perhaps you want a little bit more of a challenge, go and check out either my Hangman video or my Tic-Tac-Toe game video. Both of those are a decent amount more complicated, but a whole lot of fun to make, and I think you'll really enjoy them. Now, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know with a like. And then if you have questions or run into any sort of problems, please let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help. And be sure to click that subscribe button to get more Java tutorials and lessons like this in the future. And see you in the next video.